pray to to our Bible class. Last week, where more than last week, I think, uh, two weeks ago, we were trying to deal with mutual affection. The fact that God expects His people to have mutual affection for one another. We have learned that they work. Okay. Thank you. We have learned that um, Jesus taught his disciples some principles of mutual affection. And in the Old Testament, God did not want to. He did not want his people to. to he did not want to see his people suffer. Some of his people suffer while others did great. And so he expected those who had something in their hands, those who had um, resources to share or help um, relieve the suffering of those who did not have. We have learned that we must treat people based on their being, other than what they have or what they have not. So that uh, I, I remember Mr. Chi made a comment that if you treat people based on what they have, you, your love for them, your respect for them will be conditional. It's because of what they have. Then if they have those things not later in life, you may not respect them. You may not love them. Possessions do not make one person more of a human being than another. <coughs> and last week, we were looking at a situation where some of our prejudices um, have informed our decisions in some ways, or will inform our decisions in some ways. Perhaps you might have heard that Oh, try and wait for the end. I want to say. Try and wait for the end. I want to say. And so you have that at the back of your mind and you treat people that way. Personally, my challenge with that is the fact that we call ourselves brothers and sisters. I was having this conversation with a brother in my local congregation. I was telling him, <coughs> my Um, group leader, we, we had invited ourselves into groups in the church. And um, when there is a funeral, there's one that you pay your funeral donation to. And so I asked him, Will you allow your, and it was based on our previous conversations, will you allow your son to marry the daughter of this man, knowing that they come from this place? And he says, well, that one will be dealt with later in life. But our uh, conversations have always um, pointed to the fact that he will say no. The challenge is this. You meet this guy in church and you call him brother this. You meet this lady in church and you call her sister this. What do you mean by calling him a brother? What do you mean by calling her a sister? What are you trying to say? When we hold these prejudices against one another, this is what happens. Yes, we may come here and um, read tests that we suggest that we are eating from the same food, we are drinking from the same cup, and that we are brothers and sisters. But, I mean, <coughs> actually we are not. And as children of God, we need to come to that understanding that um, this, these kind of ideas do not have a place in the kingdom of God. We are one big family. We are God's people. We are the family of God. We are all one family. We need to understand that. The Dedeiah, when he was here, used to have uh, arguments with me saying that Muslims have No, he said, not less. Most of the mothers have picked Islam as 
a way of life as a religion. They have adopted the religion as their way of life, as their tradition. And so all the things that they do is based on their beliefs. Christianity as our tradition. Why can't we call ourselves Christians, like just Christians? Other than Mithya, only Ophia, it's the same. have a long way to go. But I believe that once these issues are being dealt with here, at least lives will be touched. We can go out there knowing that we are equipped and also help others come to the light. We also learned that we must give in as much as some of these assertions may be true. We must give one another the opportunity, the chance to prove us right or wrong. Anything that should be based on, it should be individually based. So that doctors say, yeah, my man doctors chance are proving me right ain't it? it doesn't mean um, Mavis would, Mavis is doctor's sister. Mavis would also have the same um, kind of behavior or attitude. So we must be gracious and not pray judge people. Uh, okay, maybe one time later in the study session. Last week we were supposed to have read a second text, but time um, did not allow us, so today we will do that. Luke chapter 10. What is you have the slides? Wow. Okay. And Luke chapter 10, verse 25. This, chapter 10, verse 25. This is a, a narrative about a certain man who traveled a certain road. And while he traveled, he was attacked. Uh, he he encountered robbers. So they beat him, they robbed him, and they took things away. Well, this parable told by Jesus came about as a result of a certain man who went to ask a question. This man was a lawyer. And he asked Jesus a certain question to get Jesus into a debate, to get him into a dispute, so that if Jesus failed, then he would have grounds to deal with Jesus and prove himself. But Jesus would, as we may find in the story, get this man to know more about himself. and know where he stands, and make amends if he wanted to. Let's read it now. Luke chapter 10 verse 25. Luke 10 verse 25, it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and put him to the test, saying, Okay, so this is the story of the Good Samaritan. Let's follow the reading carefully. And it, 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 what, what does the test say? Behold, a certain, a certain lawyer stood okay. up and put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Um, other texts use a certain aspect or an aspect and um, stood up and um, asked Jesus this question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Note that this is no ordinary floor member. He's a lawyer. He's an aspect of the law. He knows the law. What do you hear, man? And you can't, it's not easy to argue with these people. Look at Paul. It's not so easy to win an argument against him. And let's take our modern day lawyers. Who know me argument that? I mean, it doesn't matter whether he has the truth. You know, he might win the argument. He has a greater chance of winning the argument. And this is 
the kind of man who came to ask Jesus the question about the law, about an area he's so well versed in, he's comfortable with that area. <coughs> law. And then he asked Jesus, what? And he said to him, what did he ask Jesus? What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Okay. And he said unto him, what is written in the law? How does it read to you? And he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and with all your neighbor as and, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you shall live. But wishing to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied and said, A certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, and they stripped him and beat him, and went off, leaving him half dead. And by chance, a certain priest was going down on that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side, on the other side. And likewise, a Levite also, who, when he came to the place, he saw him pass by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, who was on a journey, came upon him. And when he saw him, he showed compassion. And came to him, and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he put on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the next day, he took out two denarii, and gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, whatever more you spend. When I return, I will repay you. 36. Which of these things do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? And he said, The one who showed mercy towards me. And Jesus said to him, Go and do the same. Amen. Amen. Okay, so here we have the lawyer asking Jesus a question about the law. Uh, Jesus, knowing where this person was coming, the question. So Jesus asked him, What does the law say? The expert in the law asked Jesus, what shall I do to be saved? I think that Jesus asked the second question, how do you read it? Because he knew that people read the law and interpreted it the way that would suit them, the way that would make them feel comfortable with their own selves other than the way it should be interpreted in the first place. And so he asked the man, what does the law say? And the man being an expert in law did not have to refer to any uh, scroll. He just, I mean, there are ten commandments. But this man was able to summarize the whole thing and give Jesus a perfect answer. Say, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Then Jesus answered, You have answered correctly. Sans him, we enter free Jesus for man. Say, we'll be our question. Now, for one, some of us say, Why are you a It doesn't usually happen. But I mean, this one was an expect. You should expect him to give it if he's going to be honest. So we expect him to give a correct answer, the right answer. And so, having answered the question, in verse 29, the man did something else. Scripture says he wanted to justify himself. And so, he said something again. Who is my neighbor? 
who is my neighbor? The Jews at the time felt more comfortable with their obligations or observing their obligations towards God than their obligations towards one another, towards their brothers, towards their sisters. This man knew that he had, I mean, if he had to go and give sacrifices, offer sacrifices, he had done that. If he had to go and pay his tithe, he had done that. If he had to do anything, if he had to serve God alone, having him as his Lord God, without worshipping any other idol, he had done it. I had the him. Number four, Sabbath. He had kept the Sabbath. He had fulfilled his obligation. He had done what he was supposed to do when it comes to himself, the relationship between himself and God. He knew he had done it. But there were two sides to the law, to the answer the, 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 the lawyer gave. The first one is to love the Lord your God with all your mind, those things. Then the second part is that, and love your neighbor as yourself. And this is where his strength might probably lie to debate Christ, to know that the subject of neighbor is a complicated one. And so he would get Christ into a debate and win the argument there. You cannot, Obeka said, dispute among my life. And so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? At the time, I found um, something that the Jewish teachers had a certain um, corrupt notion when it comes to the subject of neighbor. And I found a doctor, one doctor Lightfoot, when he said that, where he said, you shall love your neighbor he accepts all Gentiles, for they are not our neighbors, but those that are of our own nation and religion. And so the Jews, the Jewish teachers educated the people and themselves because they will feel comfortable that way. To come to the notion or to uphold the idea that their neighbors were the Jews. You are not his neighbor. In fact, they considered themselves as human beings more than any other, anyone else. They considered Gentiles as dogs. So there was an encounter between Jesus and a certain woman who wanted her child to be saved. If you could remember, um, What's it? What did he say? Yes. Adrianne the man. This woman, her, her child was sick. The child was dying. And she came to Jesus to heal her child. And Jesus replied and said, Adrianne the man, Nipamedi. And found man can manage me. Because she was not a Jew. And that's how the Jews regarded them. They regarded Gentiles as dogs. And in this parable, Jesus did not use a, a Gentile, he, he used a Samaritan. A Samaritan, the Jews considered as half breed, half human beings. But still, now we half human beings. And so, the Jews did not feel any sense of obligation to save a Gentile who was in danger of death. A side war, they knew that a yet lawful said will be cool Gentile unless he's in a situation of war. But if the person was dying, no, 
it was not his duty to go and save that person. And so that was a relationship between the Jews and others. I think what we were discussing last week would, would always come to, to this. We regard others more of human beings than, than others. Read here. I know this person from this place. So I mean, 21st century, bro. I'm like that with him. I'm like that with him. Read your own camera. And we hardly feel any sense of obligation towards those people who are not in our circles. And that is the cause for worry. Talking about mutual affection, how, how, how can we go around this, this situation? Maybe we come to that, we come back to that question later. But let's continue first. And my last point on there, verse 29, when the man wanted to justify himself, uh, asking Jesus, and who is my neighbor? It's a very good question. It's a brilliant question because I I think that um, the the what was a hot topic that was usually debated when it comes to defining who my neighbor um, was at the time. Having considered the, 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 the mindset of the, of the teachers and this man being a lawyer probably might be conflicted on who is his neighbor. Most of the time, we ask very brilliant questions. When we come to church, we deal with the topic, we, we ask very intelligent questions. And not just in the church setting. Anywhere else, we, we sometimes ask very good questions, but sometimes we only ask these questions so that we can justify ourselves. So that we can tell the other person that I'm not at fault, I'm not wrong. But if we continue on that path, then we, we won't learn much. In fact, most times we won't learn anything at all. But the objective of your question is to justify yourself. Because I don't And when teachings goes on here, uh, I remember when we were dealing with the subject of lying. These are the questions that were coming up. I mean, it's not bad. But if those questions were asked with the spirit of justifying our behaviors and our thoughts, our own ways of doing things, then it's all good. Some of us ask good questions to justify our actions, to let others see the good in us and to tell another that we are not at fault and that we are right. Rather than seeking information, divine direction, wisdom, and truth to better our lives and our relationships. So this man comes in asking a question, and who is my neighbor? But we teach Jesus and ask him so that the argument can start from there. So that he can have the opportunity to justify himself himself. In verse 30, in reply, Jesus said a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. So Jesus tells the story or the parable of the good Samaritan. First, he says that this man was attacked by robbers and was beaten. He was um, left half dead. There's a wrong shape. 
And then a priest came around. I mean, he was on his way to baby or not so called. Yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, sir. The drama we are. The man will be lying here. Then the priest. Oh, wow. Hey, look at the Bible. Oh, wow. No, cool. And uh, after the priest had left, a Levite also came around. He also saw this man, but left him and went his way. Considering the the history of um, what the Jews thought about Amos, for Jesus to achieve his purpose or to communicate what he was trying to communicate, the man lying there should be a Jew. He could not have used a, a Gentile as the one who is who has been beaten. He, he could not have rep represented that person as a as a Gentile. That man had to be a Jew. Because after all, if a Jew met a Gentile there, he was, he was obligated to, to do anything. And then someone else, a Samaritan, who was considered as half human, half breed. But who had no if I'm saying this based on what the Jews taught at the time if he had no obligation to save a Jew who was in trouble this Samaritan came around saw him and went to his aid uh, let's Priest, you know, on it, Levites, you know. Why do you think they left? You shall hear a catcher and say, Oh, my boy, ask me. Why do you think they left? Why, why did they not attend to the man who was lying there? Who was dying? But at the time he got there, he was half dead. You should say time out, so now you can do it. Now you can contest it. Yes, what you um, um, I don't know, but I heard um, they said that it was in the law that the priest shouldn't go closer to a uh, dead person. So, and the priest should not go closer to a dead person? Yes. They, like, yeah. They shouldn't get near to some people. So, and I think it's in the Bible. I heard one of our preachers saying it. That it was in the law that the priest shouldn't go nearer uh, the person. So, maybe perhaps he thought the person was dead. And so, if he should go closer, obviously God might respond and do him or something. So, he has to just pass and go and perform his duties as a priest. But, okay. From the story of Jesus, Jesus is telling a certain story, and he has made it very clear that the man was half dead. Half dead. He so he dead. cannot determine that he was fully dead or. The half dead. Dead. No, I'm saying that the priest passing by, according to Jesus, would know that this person is half dead. He's not dead yet. So and also, so, 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 Maybe a, a living person. Yeah, that's so why they is. We don't agree. Right. Even though a two year I may be a priest near here, but the question is, why did he leave him there? Why did the Levite leave him there? Why did the uh, priest pass by? Well, I do not have an answer to your question. But I also have a question. The previous question ah. didn't know what you said. But I do not have an answer to your question. Any attorney answer question? No. It's, it's, it's based on what you said. You said. Um, Based on the story, the Gentiles did not have, and the Jews did not have any obligation. They did not feel the sense of obligation. I'm not saying they did not have. They had, but they didn't feel it all. Because what of what that the Jewish teachers have taught them. So, actually, by the law, I'm saying by the law they were given, did they have a sense of obligation towards people who were not? Well, according to the interpretation, that's what God <coughs> meant 
meant it to be. Listen to what Jesus is trying to teach us here. God wanted to say that though they are not Israelites, though they are Gentiles, they were still formed in my image. So according to the law, they were supposed to treat everyone, not just the Jewish people, as their neighbors. Now answer my question, and I want to answer. Who need answer? Well, we all, we will all have to step in because we do not know the reason why they pass by. But I mean, I would think that probably the reason why people will pass by when other people will need help is because probably they have a conviction about the people lying there or they have other things they prioritize over helping that person. So it would be he thought that person could be or he doesn't deserve his help or Probably he said, okay, I'm doing something way much important than the person who is lying down. So I think that could be the key. Okay. All right. And then when it comes to the priest, first you have to look at the job of the priest. Um, primarily, the priest was a, a mediator the people and God. However, they felt more inclined towards doing what God wants than what uh, people want. So, the point is that is trying to let us know with the priest scenario is that when the priest met the man who was half dead, he thought he was more obligated to please God more than to please a human being or another person. And so when he left the person there, as Jesus said in his commandment, if you love the Lord with all your heart, with all your strength, he thought he was obeying that commandment. And so for them, if obeying the first commandment meant that they were neglecting the second one, they thought okay with it. However, Jesus was trying to let the parable teach us the relationship between the first and the second commandment. That you cannot love God and not love your neighbor. And so this is what the priest is trying to represent someone who's God first. Before putting in man. Okay. And in doing so, the person wrongly thinks that, or the priest wrongly thought that once he was going to serve God, then he was okay. He had not done any crime. He had not done any sin. The Levite, I don't know if I should have the Levite, but the Levite here is representing someone like a and um, he said, what do you call it? A Jew. Mm. Okay. So for for such a person, he, has, he already thinks that his neighbor is a person who is also a Jew. His neighbor uh, is a person who is supposed to be a good job. He's representing anyone who thinks that if he has to do good, or he, He's representing anyone who thinks that if he has to help someone out, then that person should be like him. That person should not be anybody else. An enemy or someone he does not have any relationship with. So for, for this person, it's about the vertical relationship and then uh-huh, the horizontal relationship that he has with people. And so for that one, it is discriminatory and it's based on prejudice. But for the priest one, it was based on his objective of pleasing God over man. That we, are, we are only speculating. <laughs> we can't be very sure. No, I am not all that speculating. I'm basing on the uh, narrative of who they are. And what Jesus expects of us, and what they wanted. I, I think that what you can say is um, 
probably the priest did this because he thought this way. You can't be sure what, is, what was actually going on. You've made a very good point. But I think when you give, uh, uh, when you interpret scripture, you should give allowance for mm -hmm. error. You understand? Okay, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, comment. All right. My own comment. Your own comment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for me, I think Jesus has given a parable. Parable, say a story. He is using a scenario to, and it's not a reality. And in the scenario, the facts are the facts. He is saying that a priest. So when you take the fact of the, of the story that he is given, the priest should have done like he left. And yes, if you are a priest in tea and all, yes, you say priest ABKM. Those things, if it was a reality, probably we could speculate the reasons behind that reality. It is a story he is using to demonstrate something to somebody so that at the end of the day, one may be able to conclude and see who was. A neighbor to the other and who was not a neighbor to the other and so it is not for us to think or yet priest in the area no or papa soon i mean and i say fine but then well, it doesn't i think otherwise because in speculating we also give ourselves the chance to learn certain things we are trying to we are trying to do is to uh, get to know uh to see ourselves in the story okay. and why we would do this. So maybe the, the bigger question will be, when are we likely to fail when we are presented with such issues? When are we likely to fail to show mutual affection to one another? Sure. Then we can use this story as a base and uh, see yeah. ourselves in the story and leave it out. I, I get it very well, like I understand. It is good we are doing that. But I'm saying we should be aware of the fact that we are trying to understand why people will do things and not necessarily use that to say that what Christ is purporting from it may be faulty. From the um, narrative may be faulty. Probably he hasn't factored all those things in his life. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. We are. Uh, 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 Perspective said, my and you must be an amateur. Basically. But you see, Christ doesn't just speak. He is careful about the component that comes from the world. And why did he choose a tradition? Why did he use a Levite? He could have used a variety of the sea of somebody else, right? There's a reason. These two people have. Genuine legal limitations. Genuine in the sense that the God's principle, from what my brother said, you are told not to touch a dead body, but as long as you remain a priest. And even for a high priest, it's more dangerous. This man had legitimate reasons not to touch the body, because as Christ said, he was half dead. The Levite he also had his reason. So it comes to excuses. I'm not doing this because that's what I am doing. But Christ is saying that look beyond your reasons. Look beyond the rules that you have. If you have to go out of your way to help the brother, you must do it. That is what I get from this old thing. God gave them the divinity. But why is it that? From the narration we got, we can say the police has failed, the Levite has failed, the Samaritan who had nothing to do with a Jew or the Wahoo Father. It's because these two people, a priest and a Levite, have rules, and they are obeying the rules hundred percent. So he thinks if I don't touch you, yes, scripture says I should not touch a dead body, and I go to do the work of God. In the presence of the Lord, I'm okay. The Levite also thinks because I work in the ministry of the Lord, Lord my God, I should be touching. And if I leave you and go back to do the work of God, He accepts it. But the question is, what is the work of God? Christ is 
is telling me that the word of God begins with your neighbor. That is about I understand it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bedi. Uh, let's let's move on. So, and I'm now going to come in here. <laughs> what are you confused about? Now, it seems, well, in my mind, it seems, well, I'm confused. To what extent are we supposed to obey what is written? Because there is a clear indication, as they are saying, that a priest is not supposed to touch a dead body. That person is not dead. I understand. This person is not dead. My, my but you know... Approach a dead body. He wasn't dead. That's right. I understand. I understand. But... Well, it's a story, but... Probably... He could die. And I'm what? He could die. Could die. He was not dead. Is it... As well as you say, I think we should stick with the facts that Jesus has given us. Yes. Saying that a priest came by. Okay, so uh, verse one. It a says, priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. He saw a man who had been beaten up or down, and he could not even assess that he was half dead. Jesus is giving us a fa the fact that this one. To show that he was severely beaten. Yeah. But the Levites, Udrubono, according to the fact that Jesus okay. is giving us, okay, Papa, no, no, okay, no, okay. he knew this person was not dead. Yeah. He had been severely beaten. That is why my That's the fact is. Jesus is giving us here. So I think we should work with that. My question is to what extent mm -hmm. can we breach the law of God to help our neighbor? If the help is genuine. That's why I'm confused. How do you, what do you mean by breach the law of God? For example, someone might come to you for help, whilst at that particular moment, you are on your way to worship. And you know that you could have come for help much more earlier, but it's time for you to worship. In that case, what would you do? Okay, so let me ask you this question. That kind of help you're talking about, mm -hmm. according to your question, would it be too late for the person if you you move the um, the, the meeting or whatever um, after, after 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 worship service? It could be. So practical, okay, so, practically, oh bomb pie, oh bomb pie, or walk out, uh, so, you uh, wouldn't get me, yeah, yeah. Uh, right? <laughs> okay, but the point is this. Okay, example, my neighbor, sorry. You think I'm going to go to the house, and I'm going to go to the house. Now, I'm going to go to the house. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go to the house. 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 Something like this is, is similar to what we are saying. Is it breach? No. My, my case is, is there breach? For example, there is no breach of the law when you come to Sunday and you don't. You don't. But I'm saying is there, for example, in some situations. Well, I think we should iron that fact out. If you have it and you don't give. I know, if you have it and you don't give. But over what they are doing. It's the same as giving, right? And yet so without giving, have you reached any law? Uh, let's let's not go into the okay. topic of giving. Uh, I think I think we back to that. So maybe later on you will understand. But let us also not confuse what we are doing. Just uh, just like what well, I said, let's stick to this. Perhaps that aspect of breaching the law and then maybe breaching the law to serve God. Sometimes. Some people will say, uh, like the uh, Islamists will say jihad. Huh? Yes, that is what I'm saying. They will kill to please God. If only you are standing in between something like that. That one will be a different story together. So, but now, let us stay with this story. 
where Jesus is giving us an account of somebody who has been beaten, and from there, all that we are saying from uh, Leviticus that is a do not approach. That is a spec. That will be a speculation of the. Uh, maybe do not touch a dead body, no. But. What can you say? Because if you do not defile yourself for a dead body, so okay. we may have to know their culture. What they do to dead bodies, what they do for dead bodies. But even so there, but even that point, this is what the person we are talking about is not dead. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. perhaps it gets to a point where let us we we think that success. you perhaps maybe the priest will, will get there, and some of these thoughts may come. Hey, what if the person dies? What if? But at that point, and that particular time, the person is not dead. What can you do? But this person is perhaps maybe. Maybe like what you are doing, speculating. What if he dies? The law, how would it affect me? And but at that material moment, the man is not dead, and the man, the priest, went back. Another Levite is looking. Perhaps we also consider so many other things. Perhaps those things may not even happen. Sometimes it happens to ourselves. What could you do? Boani pan, and the person is in that dire need. But we begin thinking about future things. Or But in the present circumstance, you know, boy. But you rather think about okay, the achievement may be that you may be because of present need, you would forsake the present need. Based on your own imaginations of what that might will, never that happen. might not even happen. So let us stay with the story that. These people came, they met the man. The man is not dead. They saw him and they passed by. Because perhaps if the same argument, then the Samaritan should have also have assumed that this man is also dead and also passed by. And that one to him too wouldn't have any problem. But from all the story, all of them saw the same things. One chose to act. The other two contemplated on the hour, whatever reasons they had, and they left. And that's what we should stay with. Next, next one, one. Only say one. The issue. Uh, Mark, I said, I said, one more. I said, so, Casa. Okay. Uh, Maurice, will you have an answer? Let's make it smart. I think no, nobody understands the law better than those lawyers and scribes. They do understand the law very well. So, at any point in time, this lawyer was willing to challenge Jesus on any provision. So he could have challenged him that the priest did the noble thing. But he was baffled. And when Christ asked who did what well, he said, he regarded the Samaritan as the one who saw the man lying half dead and him. And Christ recommended that they go and do say he would have challenged him if. He thought the priest did the noble thing or the Levite did the noble thing. But the issue is, we do not value people. We do not value life. We do not appreciate the pain people are going through. So we try to find excuses for ourselves to neglect what is, uh, to neglect doing what is right. If you want to find thousand reasons to stop you from doing what is right, you have a lot of them. You have more than enough. So it, it's about our predisposition. We, we should be willing to do good to people at any point in time. We should be willing to alleviate the pain of others at any point in time. And we should not give ourselves reasons because we keep on rationalizing. Just as we are doing, we are trying to do on behalf of the Levites and the, the priests. We are, we are just rationalizing. They have no reason to ignore that man. But now we are trying to point out some reasons why we think it was legit for them to ignore him. Which is false. So we, we can use this same Bible. We have people misinterpreting the dictates of God and doing things which are not. So we should know what is right, what God recommends of us, and what we are willing to do for ourselves when we are in that situation. When we see other people, let us say, because if we were those lying dead at that particular point in time, we would have been willing to save ourselves. So we should love our neighbors. As ourselves. If we are willing to save ourselves from these dying situations, let's do it for others. That, that, that's where we are coming to. Uh, Morris, can I ask a name? Can I ask two small comments before we move on? 
I need to go to his question directly. Then, question A. His question that he was asking that at what point can you violate certain things because of God? I think you should look at certain um, things that Jesus presents, certain lessons that Jesus presents, are uh, the nature will answer your question. If you look at the other two, the first two, okay, and you put them into stark contrast with the Samaritan, you see that the Samaritan, he said that he felt compassion. So over here, you see that the first two did not feel any compassion though they were worshippers of God. And to the point where the point that Jesus is trying to make is that your relationship with God is still not right if you do not have compassion for someone who is in trouble. Do you get me? So if you think that you have to come to church and someone is in need and you think, okay, I'm late, I have to hurry over, I have to do this. And you do not see a sense of compassion for that person who is in trouble, then that is where Jesus is telling us that we are rather violating God's law and we are not pleasing God. Okay. Thank you. Um, maybe we can, if, if we ever have uh, the time, maybe we will look into that. Okay, so um, the point is this. Uh, these people, whatever their reasons might have been, they value other things more than human life. Uh, the priests, I'm sure, probably had responsibilities. He had places to be. Uh, so does the Levite. Whatever their reasons were, I mean, someone was dying. Someone was dying. And looking at the kind of road they, um, they were um, using, Jesus recalls, um, states that there were three people involved. I mean, three people who came to pass by. You are not sure that another person will come and take this person. Take him to a hospital as, his, as the Samaritan did. This guy was dying. And they just left. Are there things that we value more than human life? Do we rate our responsibilities, the things we have to do, do we rate our possessions and things we may have to get above human lives? Maybe we may well see ourselves in the lives of the priests and the Levites. And it's happening all over. The most important thing is you have the money. And suddenly that's what our, 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 our society has come to. It doesn't matter how you make the money. First, money is chemical and it's true. You see, it doesn't matter. All you care about is you have the money. And we rate things above humanity, above human lives. There's no problem. What about us? Especially those of us who sit here today. What are you valuing more than human life? What is it that you are placing or you are rating over and above human life? Those people we look down upon those people that we speak negative of they are also created in the image 
of God. And Christ died for this person the same way he died for you. For me. The Levites, the priests, sometimes we who say examples are a yin now. Anna, may quite sorry no yes, and I may quite sorry no yes, and I may go yes, I mean I'm gonna be a love for God. Supposed love for God. Because I never can as in the brain, I mean go yeah for all the analysis. That's who we were. Yahoo won't need it here. Yahoo won't need it for one day. Yahoo won't need it. But Christ is teaching us something different today. That we have to be very careful in making such choices. Because in the end, we may be on the wrong side of God. That our love for God, our service to Him, and our worship that we give to Him must be. Translated into a relationship with our brothers and with our sisters. So we see in the panel of Vienti, you have some, you hold some kind of prejudice over him, over her, and you will not be gracious enough. Are you still using gracious? Here I can say, why is enough? Other places I may not be able to say that. If we will be, we are not being wise enough to allow these people to show them, to show us what they are really made of, but to sit in our one corner and judge them, pray, judge them, when they have done nothing. Last week, not so cousin, you are easy. I did my prayer here with you as a parent, so we may be. Yeah, they are told. What has this person done to deserve the kind of mindset you have about him, about her? Because he won't work. Hey. If we are valuing our, our relationship with God at the detriment of to the detriment of our relationship with one another, Christ is teaching us this morning. That is not the way to go. See, see, and don't only go for one. It must manifest. And Christ asked this question himself. If a man claims that he loves God yet hates his neighbor, oh, what was the question? How can a man love God and yet hate his neighbor? Why? Because you are going to go you can't see God. So we can make all the claims that we want to make, like the lawyer did. I've done all these things. I uh, have no other God apart from me. But when it came to the subject of loving his neighbor as himself, that was a debatable issue. It was a disputable matter to me. I don't think we have to get there. So, we don't. And this church, I think that we are blessed, especially this morning, to come to the knowledge that Christ wants you to treat everybody with mutual respect. That you need to respect every individual you come across. So Onusu Oyedipa, he was created in the image of God. That Onunti, that that person you are looking down on, because of him, God sent his son, his only begotten son, to die for him, to die for her. And you sit here and look down on this person. Where is that going to be our home? I have been using a book on the neighbor of the hermit. 
So he found ways and means of um, reducing the invoice prices he had given to the people who had come for the items from him. So that when he's moved, when he's removed from office, someone else might take it. I think sometimes those the, the, the world has a better appreciation of things more than we do. Even by this story. The, the, the people of God are supposed to have some level of knowledge and live out some kind of lifestyle, but sometimes more more and it's, it's, it's a sad reality. Right. Um, I think that child is beginning to happen. If you are good, it begins with your inner self. If you are bad, it begins with your inner self. If um, I think that when Jesus was telling the disciples to go in, on their first mission when they were sending them out. He said that they should not go to any other place but to the Jews first. Because he came for the Jews first, then to the Gentiles. So there is a principle that whatever good that you have to offer has to benefit the people around you before it will extend. If it does not benefit the people around you and it benefits the people outside of you, then maybe you have taken a deliberate attempt to take that kind of light that you have for away from the people who are around you and give it to other people. And sometimes, too, it may not be that because it is deliberate, it is wrong. Sometimes Jesus said, that the prophet is not honored in his own country. And so sometimes she, for it will be prudent that you do not elevate certain things that you have so well to benefit the people around you because they do not honor that or they do not appreciate it. They will treat it with disgust. <laughs> they will treat it with dishonor. And a lot of things. And so it will be then more prudent for people who can witness that this thing is better. So, the point I'm trying to make is that it comes with wisdom. You cannot go to the stream of this, you cannot go to the stream of this. Okay, thank you. Let me say something. Okay. okay. Um, it's, it, we, are, we are likely to fall in the trap in that part. I think so. Especially, if you want to say something? Especially those of the house of faith. But, okay. For microphone, back for a moment. Sometimes you hear something say, do a bit more than once. I've heard it before. Say, a much more than but woman, 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 to heart, so that we be, we become such kind of people, so that I become this kind of person. And you say be a act, no na be kwa kwa yekeke, but I will say be be subai. And when you have the the ability to respect people, if if you are respectful, eh, it will not be just with your church members. If you are respectful, it will transcend to everyone else. If you are generous, and you have a brand the kind, you make sure you will rise. Only will you be your way of kind of story at all. You will help that person. You you will. Because it is you. 
Sana what ye? Sana. What train you know about it? But it becomes more challenging when it's an act that we have to do by the early stages. So say the more recently. So all start here. I was say, oh, oh yeah, what they some kind of maybe energy intentional about the whole thing. You have to do it. Then with practice, as you continue to do it, it's like it's, it has to be habitual. It's like learning a new habit. So why you to to as well? It will not become your habit. But once you're able to get it to become your habit, then you can relatively easily do it for anyone else. So I think that's how we can build ourselves so that we don't fall into this kind of trap. Yeah. So you can act no quite then we are very likely to fall into. Because why does not you are not ready to move outside of this way? I have you see anything now. Or you know why now I want to it won't happen. I hope what's this This is challenging because it's, it's not part of us. And like the witness example we are given, it's, it's, a, it's about their disposition. For them, they, they feel their responsibility towards a brother, towards God's person. And I think that that is something we need. But amongst them, Sometimes we can say some of, some of them are cruel because giving to a brother is some kind of a culture, is some kind of a ritual that they must obey. But there are some unique individuals among them that you can identify that they would not ignore the brother, but they will also extend to an outsider. That is what I think we need because essentially in the corporate world, there are some people you are surrounded with that you think they are so cruel, you think they are not doing things right. But you go elsewhere and they are being praised. What is the motivation? Then I came to the understanding say any power from sometimes. So it's like many walas, many walas, almost every time. So it will get to a point that I I may not see any reason for giving it out to Walasi again. But I may want to impress someone elsewhere. So I would want them want to extend. But if it becomes my habit that I, I am supposed to give out no matter what and no matter who, then because he is very close to me, he would always get it when he needs. But when the other person also needs it at an opportunity time, the person would also benefit from it. So we, we should develop that habit. We should learn that habit of giving, that habit of uh, helping. Else, and in this case, respect. Yes. Uh, affection, mutual affection. Like, because the example Jesus used, this is a Jew. So, how come the Samaritan was able to help the Jew to that extent? It's part of him. He felt his pain. But the Jews couldn't. They, they couldn't even identify the person. They, they never thought of even. I, I finding out whether he was one of them or not, they just had to go because they felt no pain for him. They, they couldn't associate with the pain the man was going through. So we, we need this kind of habit. We need to be willing to help at any point in time. And that that if, if we want to find out when to do good, who to do good to, and all those things, if you want to define people who deserve um, good treatment, then we, we will end up being hypocrites. But it should be part of us, so that no matter who comes our way, the person will benefit from it. Okay. Thank you. You see my time is up. But let's Thank read uh, verse 36 and verse 37. And then, uh, listen to it. So, um, He's asking that, they are saying that we should be good to everybody, no matter who the person is.
So using the story where the Jew man had been and beaten him, the priest and the Levites had that. He's asking that in our daily situation, what if he knows somebody who is a, is a robber and he has seen, he met the person in that state, should he still help the person or should he? Good question. Anna, Anna, what's that say? Well, I think that I am Roma. I get here for my own according to So you should help me. Yeah. Yes. Now we evangelize Okay, that is what I was talking about. Sometimes, in certain situations, we, we begin to prefer or prefer other things about helping people. For example, it's not like sometimes, I don't know a typical situation, but sometimes we feel like the person we are going to help, it might lead us to do something we are not supposed to do. But you genuinely know that I go with your member. So in that case, will you be like, okay, it says that you should love your neighbor, so I'm going to help. Regardless of the effect it might happen to your religious life, if okay. the effect is not defined. Daniel, that's why I'm saying that um, um, in that case, you have to apply wisdom. Um, Solomon states that um, someone with a hot temper, okay, when a person is in trouble and you get a person out, the person will go and begin again. And there may be even more devastating effects in the end. And so he advises that you let the person experience the pain that the person has to experience. Then the person can learn from it. You may say, so we will be able to rough off. Now we will be able to rough off. I'm not sure why. Maybe I'm not going to rough I was saying, baby, you are. If you are one day, I'm going to say, you two days, three days, we have to be My baby, you are. I'm going to go Friday. 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 I'm going to as children of God, we have to know what our Father wants us to do. And we cannot know it until or unless we start reading what He has written for us to read. And this, a side that we are personally, we cannot. We have a big challenge reading scripture. But the are you. Yeah. And so we have, to, we have to know what God wants us to do in whatever situation. We have to apply wisdom. Yakan, I will say a word, yeah, but. We have to be careful how we uh, go about when it happens in real life. I mean, this person, I think the story is very clear. We have to say, we have to. Let's go to verse 36, 37 and close. Verse 36. Mm -hmm. Which of these three do you think provided to you? Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor of the man who fell into the robber's hand? Okay, wait. Uh, so, the Samaritan, he had picked this person, put him on his donkey, sent him to an inn or a hospital, they are taking care of him. They are giving them extra money to take care of this guy. If they incur extra costs, he says that when I come back, I'll reinvest you. This guy clearly values him in life. And he values him And in fact, he values him in life. He's just valuing him in life. He, he is feeling the pain of this other person. And that's what Christ wants us to come to. To have mutual affection for one another. So how? So how? So you ask yourself, so if I see a Yema, what does he wants to do, want us to do for those of us here? His own people. He wants us to do even better. And then Jesus asked this lawyer, this expert in law, um, which of these three people do you think 
is a neighbor of the man who fell, who fell into the hands of the robbers. And our man is say, 37. Yeah. And he said, <laughs> the one who showed mercy towards him. The man who showed mercy towards him. But by the way, you should take one of the class five as the neighbor. Now, also can't see me. It's interesting to know that this lawyer, after having been taught, schooled by Jesus with this story, could still not come to the conclusion, say, it was a non-Jew who is the neighbor. That it was a Samaritan. Who would be called the neighbor of this one who fell into the hands of the robbers? Who was who is near Gaza Maritam? Did you read that? He said it was the one who showed him mercy. Samaritan, no panic, energy. This topic of uh, our subject of prejudice and uh, bigotry is, is a serious thing in the church. Is that serious? To the point that it's still so difficult for this person to say, about why I say, a Samaritan. A Yahweh will freeze her. She said, Go for it. Yahweh will freeze her. She said, Go for it. She said, Go for it. She said, Go for and one that's what I Hey! How is he able to bring himself to say, say, Sam to go ye be now for yes, Now the prophet bit me for Nazareth. On a point of Nazareth. And the prophet bit me for Sam to go to Swara. It's impossible. And it is over. And like the man who went to Jesus, rich young ruler. I called Jesus in chain, and then I called Then Jesus gave him what he's supposed to do. In the end, scripture says that he left. Because of the truth that he had come to know. And I think sometimes that's what happens here. We come to church, we ask questions, trying to defend ourselves, then we get the divine, <laughs> divine direction comes, and it's this way. And Safari, we are uncomfortable taking that part. So we sit here and we are like, ah, they will get you. God will understand. <laughs> Even before we say the last prayer, we had rejected the word of God. We are told, let me And then I'm sorry, now I'm fine. I'm more than one of the power. I'm coming. Essentially, that's what we say. But whatever it is that we come to hear every Day that we step foot here, God is trying to teach us something new. And in teaching us, He's trying to say, I want you to mature in this area as well. And when we reject it, we say, God, we don't want to mature into your likeness. But heaven, what are you also? So, brothers and sisters, we have to. On make a girl that alone is on. Yeah, 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 who have the spirit of God, those of us who are people and children of God, God has given us the grace. We need to believe that. God has given us the grace to be able to handle these things. And that's why he teaches us. We only need to pray for the grace to allow so that we can have the strength to do that. Okay, so time up. We will end here. Go on the next week. We hope to have us all around and continue. Separately, be able. Let's yeah, if there is any for this to God bless us all. Amen. Amen. Amen.
we thank our brother so much for leading us in the Bible class. These are the facilitators today. Bible class was led by our brother uh, Sarichima. Song will be led by our brother Enoch Limpo. Prayers, Richmond and Porta. Benoni play second prayer. Richard and Kuma will give us the third prayer. Lost Sapa, Boris Adoni, and then help it. Um, Richmond, I is not here, so um, Daniel Akan will help and then give us. Okay, so our usher is Vincent. If we are comfortable, shall we be on our feet as we read our Bible? Uh, then for today. Today I'm reading will be taken from the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse number 9 and 10. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 9 and 10. It says, Let us not lose heart in doing good. For in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. Verse 10. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are of the household of the faith. Amen. 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 At this moment, we shall invite ourselves to the Get our foundation. In number 137. Ready? Go. Yet a Babeshemu, yet a Jumbumpa, yet a Fonte, yet a Fonte, Sada Prom Proemu, yet a Jumbumpa, yet a Jumbumpa, yet a Yeah. 
I don't know, get access or whatever sin we have committed throughout the week. We ask that you forgive us and cleanse us so that our worship will be acceptable by you. Father, we will be grateful for our teachings on today, Father. That whatever we have learned today, let us take in us. Let us make a conscious effort to practice it so that by time it will be a habit of us. So that we will portray Christ and what you want us to be to the world. Father, we are about to start our service. We ask that those who are going to lead us, those who are going to partake in us in the service, we ask that to give them the strength, to give them the mind, to give them the knowledge, so that together we can worship you in the name of Christ. Father Lord, we are asking that those who are on your way and anybody who is listening to this service online, we ask that together pay attention and pay heed to your service, so that together we worship in your holy name. We ask that whatever blessing we require this morning to worship you. Whatever ingredients we will need to make our worship holy, we ask that you grant it upon us so that you come and descend upon us so that your worship will be acceptable by you. We ask that you send from your heavenly places and join us here this morning to take your service in the mighty name of Christ we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. This will turn our being now in number 83. And after all, prepare to dine with our Mika. Yes, you may come Ready? Go. Yes, you may come
we do as scripture says. Jesus, the night before he was betrayed, denied by his disciples, he had this dinner with us. And there are so much happenings that happened before, during, and after his death that cannot be said here. However, the importance of the activities that surrounded the death of this noble man cannot be allowed not to be broadcasted because this death is the death that saves us. Without wasting much, uh, wasting much time, we are going to take a break. We are going to pray over it and do that in the remembrance of Christ. Shall we pray? We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for allowing Christ to die for us and becoming our advocate. We pray. As, I, as we are about to take this bread, we signify to your body, the body of your son. We pray that you help us so that as he was able to put and lay down his life for his friends, you help us so that we also lay down our lives for our friends so that we will have mutual love. In Jesus' name I will pray. Amen. Amen. I want to briefly talk about the cross and how you are going to and what you are going to do with Christ. The song that we just sang says that Jesus keeps us near the cross. But I want to ask what you would do with Jesus when you come near the cross. A lot of people came here, Jesus. I'd you know, like to share some of what they did to Christ with you. I began with the disciples. And the disciples came here, Christ. Most of them thought that he came for a political kingdom. And so he came to overthrow the Roman government and establish his own kingdom. In that even when Jesus asked his disciples that who do you think men think that I am? Or who do men say that I am? After Jesus correctly answered Jesus, uh, after Peter correctly answered Jesus, he went ahead to say that Jesus would never and should never be killed. However, Jesus demonstrated to him that Get away from me, Satan. Because Peter thought that Jesus came so that he would not die, but rather live and overthrow the group of the Romans. After the taking of the bread, Jesus took the cup to contain the fruit of the vine, which represents his blood. And so we shall do likewise. We will take this cup and we will pray with her. Shall we pray? We thank you for dying on the cross for us. My dear Lord and Father of my parents, we thank you for even instituting this. So that it will always be something that we will always remember and live our life as such. We pray and that this blood represents the covenant that you made with us. We pray that you help us so that we will be able to keep the covenant. In Jesus' name have I prayed. Amen. Amen. So, what would you do with Jesus? 
church. But the disciples, most of them, dealt with Jesus as a political king. Sorry. And then they thought that even after denying Jesus, Jesus was capable of overpowering those who had decided to arrest him. When Judas had re uh, realized that, he felt so sorry for denying Jesus because he felt after taking those coins, Jesus would still have the power to overcome those who arrested him. After taking some moments, he realized that Jesus was not doing that. He felt so sorry that gradually Jesus was going to be killed. He returned the money that he had taken. And do you know what the priest said to him? He said that, what are we going to do with that? Not the money, but his repentance. When Judas told them that he felt sorry, as priests, their job was to be even grateful. However, they chose the opposite way. So this is what the priest was to do to Jesus. But I'm going so much far, I would want to ask you, this is about the priest, uh, Judas, about the disciples. How about us today, as we have the opportunity to be with Jesus, are we going to deny him? Are we going to think of him as a servant and as us also live our lives as servants? It's my hope that we live according to the expectations of the kingdom of Jesus. We thank God for helping us to dine with him. We now move to another uh, important aspect of our worship. Giving. When it comes to giving, um, sometimes um, it, it, it done sometimes mostly in a frozen manner because sometimes someone sitting beside you may feel in a very sorry of this question will be real. Yeah, so let's try to Sometimes we feel those. The point I want to make is that when it comes to giving, it's a matter of your relationship with God. Not even your relationship with any other person but God. Because whatever that we give is something that God sees. And so I, this morning I want us to give with a mindset that God sees what we are given. Not with a mindset that no man will see what we are given and so we, uh, we can give whatever we want to give. May God help us as we begin our giving.
We thank you, our Father in heaven, this morning for being with us in our worship. We thank you for your grace and your mercies. Father, we thank you for making it possible for us to meet here, dining with you, and at this moment, Father, giving us the will and the power to give unto thee. We pray that wherever this morning came from, Father Lord, we will continue to fill the in multiple hosts. So that Father will continue to give more to help thy kingdom to grow. We thank you, Father Lord, for our answer prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Alright, thank you very much. We'll continue with some few songs and then we'll continue with some songs and grateful unto you for the opportunity granted unto us to come before you to learn your word and to dine with you. We thank you for Christ who died on the cross and in him we have this opportunity. We commit the rest of the service into your care that you continue to give us the same enthusiasm that we began this service with and when we end successfully we shall praise and adore your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Are we set? <laughs> that PX majority or sorry, PA. Can we give it a try? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Casa Neji, Casa Trewuma. I'm on my hand, I want to be mine. If I last, I'm part of my rap. Casa Neji, Casa Trewuma. Casa Neji, Casa Trewuma. Ready? Go. Casa Neji, Casa Trewuma. Casa eja, casa chira woman. Casa eja, casa chira woman. Casa eja, casa chira woman. Marriti, I must say for no muntu. Woman, marriti e wo. Eja doni me casa woman. Masem no ye kwari. Casso, Casso, Casa eja, casa uma ya surite. Good, good. And before we say the last prayer, we sing a hymn number sixty-nine, the key version, and then we'll pray. Oh, ye, 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 so no. Ready, go. Oh, ye. such a wonderful day like today, the first day of the week that Father you have assembled us here to listen to your word, to grow in you, and to love you more, and to show that Father, indeed our promise and our resolve not to walk in the path of the, or the, the ways of the evil, but to follow you 
Father, we stay committed to that. Father, we say, may your name be praised. We thank you for your words that, Father, always you give to us to remind us that in this journey that, Father, we have embarked on, we need to love one another, show one another the affection, and show that to prove that, Father, we love you, we must also love our neighbor. We've learned that today, who our neighbor is. Father, let us learn this and let us show the kindness and the compassion, the mercy that, Father, you want us to show to our fellow human beings. In that, Father, we demonstrate your love that, Father, you have. I mean that through that, Jesus Christ came upon this earth and sacrificed himself for us all. Father, we know that this is our mandate and this is our commission. Give us whatever we need Supply us with everything that, Father, we need, psychologically, mentally, physically as well. So that whatever prejudices that we have, we have all in our hearts. Whatever inherited hatred, Father, we gained from our parents, from our ancestors, and from even the community where we live in. As now, Father, we have resolved to be your followers. Father, we will throw away all of these prejudices. So that we'll be able to love our neighbor, especially those in the household of faith. We pray that we let the bond of unity bind our hearts together so that as we will walk to you, none of us will be missing. And in the last day, all of us will be saved as Father, you have promised us. We are committing the entire week into your care. We know that we will never come before your presence and leave empty handed. We know that we store our blessings that, Father, you have purpose for us. So we ask that as we have begun a new week, Father, let's, let this new week be a successful and a fruitful week for us. Father, Father, if we had challenges in the week past, Father, let this week be a new one. Let us see a new dawn. If our night has become too long, Father, we pray. Whoever amongst us is sick, Father, let us not leave your presence in the same condition. Father, whoever has a heavy heart because we, he or she has lost a loved one, he or she has lost, lost a property or something valuable in our hearts, Father, we pray that you console us and give us joy and give us peace in this week so that next week, like today, we will meet and our prayer, our supplication, everything will be turned into thanksgiving. We are committing our week, the our entire life within the week to your care. Those of us who work, we pray, give us grace so that we'll be able to excel in our workplaces. Those who are teaching, all doing off campus, those who are doing their thesis, those who are writing their projects and assignments, those who are attending classes, Father, whatever we find ourselves doing, we pray that you let your blessings fall upon us so that our lives will be blessed. We are committing those uh, brothers and sisters in the junior high school who are about starting their BEC to your care. That as young as they are, Father, guide them in whatever things they do. Let them recollect whatever they learn so that on the day of accountability, which is very soon, they will excel. And Father, we will come back here as children and give you praise and honor and adoration to your name. We have nowhere else to go. Our refuge is you, that Father, we have. So we are committing our whole life into your care. Whatever the devil has planned ahead of us, that Father, we do not know. We ask that your Spirit lead us and pave way where there is no way. And let your blessings fall, out, uh, fall upon us, even where there are curses. Even where people expect us to fall. Father, let us walk over and let us even run over those places so that we will go on head and we will come on hand. In all things, praise and an adoration will be unto your name. We are committing our whole life to you that your blessings fill our bosom and make us fall today and forevermore. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.